How do you know if your service is getting better or getting worse? Let me tell you a quick story. You've probably heard about the movie Moneyball and it's about the Oakland A's. And as the story goes, the team didn't have a lot of money to hire star players. So what their manager Billy Bean did is he used special statistics to find good players who were overlooked by other teams. And by using this special analytics of his, he was able with his team to achieve a 20 game winning streak. It changed baseball forever and how teams go about picking their players. And this is very synonymous to how a lot of service leaders today measure their service experience and run their business. And to do that, I'm excited to introduce Mario Simons, our VP of Transformation at Origo. Mario is a Six Sigma black belt and an all-round innovation ninja. Mario, welcome to the show, buddy. I'm really excited to have you on. I would love for you to start out by sharing with us why is it important for us to measure the service experience. I know it's an honor to be here, Yasin. Really appreciate you getting me here. I've been listening to your podcast and, you know, uh, the amount of insights you bring from the industry and share with the community is just amazing. Thank you. That's and, good for my ego, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, honestly, I think, uh, you know, uh, service excellence is nothing new. Um, and, uh, you know, talking about numbers and things like that, it's not new to the industry. Uh, I used to work with a North American airline about two decades ago. Mm -hmm. And they were going through a bankruptcy mm. uh, retrieval and they had a lot of issues with getting the confidence of the customers, mm. right? Every time they had uh, IROPS or irregular operation due to weather and flight cancellations, customer NPS rating would right, go crashing would down. Yep. It was huge. And what we noticed and, you know, through implementing the various aspects or pillars of service excellence, we realized that it could be fixed with, you know, focus on what the customers are saying. Mm. And we realized that one important thing that, you know, we were doing every time a customer called in, mm. we would start by saying no. So customer would say, ah. can I fly tonight? If you don't have a flight now, can I fly tonight? And we say, no, we don't have flights tonight. Okay. And we changed the entire approach. We said, we'll huh. never start our response with no. Right. And we started saying, I have a flight tomorrow morning at seven or at eight, which one would you prefer? Right. right. And that changed the entire customer's experience, right? Because now they're not hearing anything negative at the start of the conversation mm. and they're already hearing options. And these are the kind of service innovation you need to bring in to mm. various aspects of your service excellence. Most important thing is looking at the numbers. Mm. Well, that, that's interesting. Uh, simple changes, as simple as changing a script yeah. and how you respond to a customer can have a massive impact on the entire experience because if you start on the wrong foot, you can only expect the service to get worse from there. Absolutely. And, you know, when we talk about service innovation, service experience, it's not always, you know, transformation in terms of digital or technology. Mm. There are various nuances of service experience that you could change through, you know, operational excellence mm. by, you know, experience design mm. and the service innovation. So you need to look at all mm. aspects of the service uh, excellence. So that's a great segue to talk about the different KPIs to measure service experience. So how do we go about it, Mario? So generally, I, uh, I think service experience is you know, defined by three pillars mm. of the entire service experience. And those are service innovation, mm. experience design mm. and operational excellence. Mm. And operational excellence is the easiest way to kind of bridge the gap between the service experience that your customer is experiencing, right? And you can quickly kind of bring in change through Lean Six Sigma, total quality management, jobs to be done. There are various and methodologies. It's because, like, you have more control over it? Absolutely. You have more control, easier to work it's with. Internal. It's, it's all about internal. internal processes Absolutely. and procedure. Yeah. yeah, and that's why in uh, this series, we'll be focusing a lot on operational excellence and we'll be doing a deep dive into the different aspects of it so you can bring change and innovation and improvement faster to your business. So, so Mario, let's, let's start breaking down. So you mentioned service innovation. So how do we measure service innovation? So what I mean by service innovation, right? It's basically bringing in innovation into your service model. Mm. How do you bring in innovation? How do you bring in change to improve the service experience, right? And you know the best way to measure that is customer retention, Mm -hmm. Time to market, so you have an innovation, you have an idea. How fast new can product, you product, new service. new service? How fast can you bring it forward? 
and then return of investment because you're bringing something in what is the roi to that right so those right. are the key elements to look at when you talk about right. service innovation and, and maybe like would um say predictive maintenance be a, a good example of service innovation yeah absolutely right yeah. because yeah. that will help you retain your customers you can offer them more services not just the pm or the active maintenance but then you can be a little bit more predictive and prescriptive absolutely because right. that'll also help them reduce the downtime right of the mm. equipments and be able to continue operations seamlessly without that's any unique. stop yeah absolutely. that's unique yeah. that helps you win more market share like i said uh you know retention Time to market. So, yeah. what can you break down for me a little bit? Time to market. So, time to market basically is let's say you have a new product, right? Mm. And uh, you've designed it. So, you want to make sure that you know once you're you've got a kind of acknowledgement of your product that it's fit for market. You want to move it quickly into the market to commercialization so and make it the available. It takes you to come up with the idea, From get the funding to. to launching the product uh, absolutely all right and what was the third metric uh the return of investment right, right? obviously and obviously yeah how much you're spending how much resource you put in into you know creating the new product or service right and what is the cost that goes behind it and how fast do you get that back so makes yeah. sense uh so that's service innovation let's talk about experience design so first of all how do you define experience design so experience design is the effort that you put in to change the entire customer experience right customers are touching you at different uh, touch point in your service experience and how does that uh, you know experience change uh, like I mentioned right the service no aspects of the North American airline that's a change in the service design mm. and and some of the uh, you know elements to look into is CSAT right uh, NPS right uh, in terms of uh, how you're changing the uh, experience design right. because it's talking about the customers experience while interacting with you right and it, this is typically a survey a CSAT survey and, a, a, and an NPS after someone goes through the service so when you close the ticket or when you finish the job that is correct yes okay. or even you know sometimes it may not be a survey and you uh, you know get reviews or ratings online so you have to like be social active. listening, so social like listening. Facebook, Google reviews yeah, Yelp to, user pilot perfect yeah you've got to keep listening to your customers through all forums not just you know CSAT right. yeah and is it just digital channels like phone and online or does it also bridge to the offline world like the actual physical interaction it's yeah, that you also got to listen into your calls, right? Because, right. you know, you've got to monitor what customers are talking to when they speak to the CS, because sometimes they would share the previous experience. Or can you make sure the technician updates us on the time that uh, he's going to be there? Because last time when he went here, it was already after hours and things like that. You got to right. pick those feedback from customers, at, like you said, right? Every uh, right. An opportunity. And one of the things I noticed uh, at airports, and uh, you know, they keep improving the experience, like uh, that's the wait time, or when you're waiting for your flight, like there's uh, comfortable seating, there's food, like yeah. that's all thought out. That's not, yes. you know, suddenly, you know, someone came up with the idea and it was perfect on day one. Correct. It's been, it's, it's an iterative approach to yeah. study the behavior of your customer, whether it's through online channels, like on your website, through chat, through email, through phone calls, or offline when they actually visit your site or you are at their site and the technician is on site. Would you say so? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's a continuous improvement process, right? You don't, um, like you said, you can't build Rome in a day, right? <laughs> this right. is an uh, ever improving uh, design or experience, right? And uh, whether you're talking about airport experience, whether you talk about Uber or even you know, uh, Starbucks these days, right? They right. keep changing the way you right. interact with them, right? The experience changes every day. they make sure day. that it's consistent. Absolutely. So no matter who or where, where. you visit, right. it's always consistent in terms of their service. So, I love yeah. that. Uh, so now that we've covered service, uh, service innovation, experience design, let's really spend the rest of the time going into operational excellences. That's what service leaders have the most uh, control over to really bring more profits and uh, get better performance out, out of their team and keep their customers happy. Yep, absolutely. And I, like I mentioned, right, uh, operational excellence is one of the key things to look at. Mm. Quick wins, easy to kind of, you know, uh, make changes, mm -hmm. quick changes. And that's where you get the most benefit. So um, for us, I think the focus has always been, you know, order to cash. And that's where most of your customer interaction happens, right? Right from the time they contact customer service, 
then you know interacting with dispatch to get updates on technician schedule right. or you know uh, when the technician is going to be at your site you know your interaction with the technician on site right and then when you get the bills right and you know, you know sometimes and we've seen this uh, based on our experience that you have disputes and you still interact with the billing team the ar right. team right and then collections so those are the points of interaction and that's where you can improve and bring in operational excellence right so to just reiterate um while operational excellence cover really all aspects of your business whether it's hr it's sales it's marketing support all of that but 3d uh the uh the key workflow uh in uh, a service business that impacts the customer experience is your order to cash and the different uh, uh, stages or uh, departments that have uh, uh, most impact uh, on the order to cash is your customer service, mm -hmm. you've got your dispatch, your field technician, technician support, parts procurement, billing, yeah. and collections. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. So maybe then, Mario, why don't we break down uh, each uh, area of the order to cash and talk about the KPI. So what should I be looking at? So obviously this will be relevant to different people. So let's say I am uh, the VP of operations right. uh, and customer support rolls under me or I'm the chief commercial officer, right? It depends, different companies have different structures and organization design. Sure. Uh, but let's say customer service rolls up to me. What should I be looking at? So customer service uh, is one of the most important uh, aspect of the business, right? Mm. Because what happens at the customer service point has an impact to the downstream processes. Right. And domino that's, effect. yeah, it has a domino effect, right? And that's where the customers engage or interact with you more often than, you know, any other um, stage. function or stage right. of the process. Uh, key KPIs there are, you know, how fast can you answer the call when the customer is calling you? Mm. So average speed of answer is important. Average speed of right? answer. And then it's also important how, you know, you maintain your service level with the average speed of answer. How do you define service level? Generally defined what percent of call you answer within the average speed of answer that you define. What Generally it's about, you know, 30 seconds or lesser. Okay. So you don't have customers waiting for you for someone to speak to them. Uh, for more than 30 seconds. But what if the service call is not coming in, the service call not coming in through the phone channel, it's coming through a portal or email. Do you also measure it across the yes, channels? Yes, it's these days, right? And like you rightly said, uh, customer service is not just calls. It's omni-channel. You mm. have chat, portals, emails. Right. So right, average response time across all channels. All channels. You've got to measure that. Although people are a little more patient when it comes to emails, right? less patient with chat and lesser when it comes to the, voice, right. right? So emails probably two hours, mm. I would say chat about a minute, but mm. you know, voice has to be within seconds, right? Because you're waiting on the phone for someone to answer. You really expect someone to be there within 30 seconds. Right. So that's, that's one measurement is also, you know, and we've observed, right? If people are waiting for more than 30 seconds, they abandon Abandoned, the call. Right. They just call the next service provider to see who can, you know, so uh, is abandonment fix. rate uh, another metric? Abandon rate is another metric, okay. right? That's important. Also your service operation hours, right? Sometimes uh, companies are only providing support between like 7 a.m. to, you know, right. 6 so p.m. So that's after where we see a lot hours, of the yeah. pain points, uh, you know, for our uh, uh, partners is they don't cover after hours or they have the technician picking up the phone yeah. or it goes to voicemail or worst case sure. scenario, no one picks up the phone. True. And, you know, as a business, you want someone to, you know, acknowledge that you have a service requirement right because they work in commercial kitchens they've got you know dinner supper to support or at least be prepared for the next day morning breakfast right and right. you know uh, if they know that someone has taken their service request and there's a technician either going after hours or at least early morning they know that you know they've got the service that they're looking for and they could kind of rest more peacefully got so it. So average uh, time, uh, the res uh, average response time. Speed of time, answer. Yeah. Speed of answer. Abandonment, abandonment rate. rate what service else? level. And then quality of service. Like we mentioned before, right? We've got to listen to what the customers are saying, even through quality. And making sure that quality is delivered How do you consistently. That? These days, you know, you have technology that can do that, right? You can just bridge in digital uh, monitoring. They pick up on keywords, pick up on customer sentiments, pick up on, you know, uh, even the tonality of both the mm. team member that's talking and the customer. 
and you don't really need you know to put in bomb bodies there to listen to the call so so you're literally yeah. listening to a call and like there's like a scorecard absolutely yeah. and, it, and yeah. identifies where the opportunities are so if the customers uh, you know, irate if there's an escalation you know if the call how co long the call was that's another important aspect right the average handle time average handle time you don't want the customer to be spending so much time on the call trying to kind of you know just put in a service request so right. that's another good kpi to measure right and that, that impacts your capacity big time to uh, absolutely you're dealing with thousands of calls yeah. uh, a day and going back to quality you also want to measure quality so that you know the input in terms of the service order is accurate so that it doesn't has an impact to downstream, you know, which probably the next step is dispatch, right? Mm. And, you know, so well, that what do dispatch. You know let's, let's dig in a little bit. So it's important to be able to troubleshoot the right uh, problem, to understand what the issue is. Right. So when dispatch identifies which technician to send, they're sending in the right, right. technician with the right parts. So you like soft troubleshooting, would you say? Yeah, very soft, high level understanding of what the equipment was, what's broken down get whatever insights they can so that you know they've given enough detail for the dispatcher to identify the right technician right, right parts and things like that so you look like like at what like accuracy of information and completeness absolutely yeah. right because, because and when, like, you say, when you say accuracy right the model type the you know right. uh, the manufacturer the series and you right. know, what exactly is broken down right so. and then the completeness because like what we see a lot of times is like we send out a technician but like you know the 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 operator like hey you know they yell at them like why did you come you know it's this morning you know it's uh, like breakfast or it's lunch like we don't have time for you uh sure. or like they worst case they go to the site and there's no one there's no one there uh Absolutely. so yeah. so the completeness and making sure that we're getting uh, one all one. critical details need right. to be captured there, right. right and how do you how do you measure for that and that's again uh, what we call uh, quality auditing right okay. making sure you have you know a checklist of all things that needs to be documented and done and then you're auditing those if those like are literally there. random check on work yes, orders that absolutely. you just uh, took in and yeah okay and all then right. and, and check for accuracy and it also comes from the feedback from dispatch right and mm. you want to make sure that you know you're not right. repeating those mistakes and you know providing or enough billing. information and then downstream <laughs> in terms of billing right, right? yeah okay right. no that, that that's that's fantastic and then look uh, i know we're uh, rattling off uh, a lot of uh, kpis for We'll probably put it like in a, a cheat, sheet cheat sheet of sorts, yeah. uh, you know, broken down by yeah. line of business so that you have uh, easy access to it uh, and uh, you don't have to uh, take a lot of notes <laughs> while we're uh, going through this uh, process. Uh, no, that's fantastic. Okay, so so we talked about, is there anything else on customer service? No, I think we've covered pretty okay. much. Uh, Let, let's all move then to dispatch. So in dispatch, so that's good. Customer service dispatch, are they the same? Are they the difference? So <laughs> can yeah. you give us the insight. So like I said, right, dispatch is the you know next logical flow from customer but in service. But some companies, you have customer service as dispatch and dispatch as customer service, or do you it see it? Do, the process doesn't change. The role probably is merged, right? So okay. you have one individual doing multiple processes, okay. but it's still a process of, you know, first kind of making sure you get down all the requirements of the service call. service call and you put in the service right. order and then you kind of identify you know uh, the dispatch process mm -hmm. which is basically identifying who's the technician that you will send out what parts probably is required right. the technician will look at the notes and identify the equipment and make his assessment on right. you know what potential tools and parts to carry right. so that's the most logical flow and it could be you know the same person depending on how large the operation right, is right. and then sometimes it's just a different team right got because it. you've got large operation national uh, level yeah. companies which have you know uh, operations yeah. all over the place while you know the cs uh, customer service is centralized at uh, interesting know, I'm, I'm curious to know like how do you have your organization structured today do you have dispatch and customer service in one role do you have a more specialized i'm just curious how everyone is running their operation and also let me know about the KPIs. Like, do you, are you tracking some of the KPIs, all of the KPIs we've mentioned? Are there other KPIs uh, that you're tracking that we haven't mentioned? Please uh, chime in in the comments uh, below. So Mario, so let's talk about dispatch. So break down dispatch KPIs for us. So for dispatch, uh, the most important thing is scheduling the technician, right? Mm -hmm. Technician uh, scheduling, technician utilization, making sure your technicians have the right job, you know, and you're utilizing the technicians well. It's also about, um, you know, the uh, TAT, 
Wait, how fast are you scheduling them? And turn then around turnaround time, time for uh, the technician. So those are the key aspects. And of course, you know, uh, making sure that uh, by doing this, you're reducing truck rolls. So making mm. sure all of these are accurate, therefore reducing the number of truck rolls and reducing cost to the customers. So it's, when you're saying scheduling a technician, like are you uh, looking at um, technician capacity and or utilization like what, what do you mean by scheduling technician so a um, couple of things right and and one thing there is like you rightly said identifying the technician for the right equipment so mm. you've got the right technician getting all these specific uh, work orders that he's specialized in and, and how do you know if that's not being done well um, most of the time you'd know that once the technician on site and then uh, reaching out for tech support right asking okay. help because they're not the expert of so that the average, and then, average handle time and also the time support. spent at on site, on site to right. fix it right so that's important how these kpis yeah. it's like uh, you catch them downstream but they're sure. really symptoms of a, of a Miss problem upstream. in upstream correct mm. and and that's that's important right so when you're scheduling the right technician and using route-based scheduling. So, you know, they're not going back and forth in terms of which mm. site to visit. So that's important as well. Travel so time, is travel that something time, you track yeah, too? Absolutely, travel time through. Okay. And, and these days, right, the technology is so easily available right. and you've got, you know, uh, companies like Amazon for delivery, Uber for driving, using the same technology, route-based technology, right? Right, so they're available so, just for these enterprise yeah, uh, It's easily available. It's easily available for anyone. Uh, and, and you could optimize your kind of technicians, uh, utilization, reduce cost in terms of mm. fuel and gas and things like that. So uh, those are things that, you know, dispatch should be measured on, uh, you know, there are a lot of opportunities there that we hear from customers when you know we talk to them. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the key aspect okay. to look into. Makes sense. Um, and that's before service, right? So now, okay, so you, you took in the call, you dispatched the technician or you scheduled the technician. Um, next comes, obviously, you know, the on-site work or the field work, which, you know, uh, probably the most popular uh, KPIs there, like first time fixed awesome. rate, but is there anything else other than first time fixed rate you, you would want to look at? And I think, you know, first time fixed rate is uh, the most important. Um, of course, you know, uh, there are other aspects to it where sometimes they may not have the ne uh, necessary parts with them and you can't necessarily uh, reduce the number of truck rolls, right? But uh, having yeah, said like sometimes that- Sometimes they do it on like, uh, there's two truck rolls, the first, yeah role is to diagnose and the second uh, truck role is to actually fix, fix the equipment uh, and where they have the right equipment. parts and tools yeah. to fix it so that that's that's part of the business as well because you know sometimes you, you cannot yeah, yeah you cannot always have all the uh, parts right and yeah. you sometimes need to order parts and and therefore you know the parts procurement teams comes in and for the on-site technician to troubleshoot and identify the right parts, right? Because these days, even the parts, they change, right? Mm. And there are so many new parts coming in. Uh, it's really important to identify the right parts and make sure that we are procuring the right part. Because what happens is that causes another delay in being able to fix the uh, right. uh, problem. Because you've ordered the wrong part, you only get to kind of uh, you know, know once the part has arrived and then you have to reorder the part. Right. That causes so, so you're measuring delay. Truck, the roll, truck rolls. And time to fix as well. So time, so first time fixed rate, truck rolls. Yeah. Average truck roll. Average truck rolls. Per technician. Per technician. And you're and probably segmenting that data somehow. Correct. Yes, yeah, we to are. See, to like, see, you know, it also helps improve technicians, uh, you know, training needs analysis and be right. able to identify what training the technician what needs, what equipment, what... Um, Makes sense. So first time fixed rate, uh, uh, average truck roll, Mean, mean time to resolution, you yes, said. Time, 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 to, time resolution. to resolution. Okay. Yeah. Or mean time so to what do you mean by time so. to resolution? Um, it's from the time that you got the uh, service order mm. to the time you uh, provide the resolution and mm. average it, of course, based on number of uh, work orders. Stupid question. Why is that important? It's important because that from both from the customer standpoint, because you know, uh, it reduces their downtime and right. they have downtime equipments right. uh, ready. For us, because uh, you know the cash flow comes in right faster, faster. right? Yeah, your cash conversion cycle. Your cash you... conversion cycle is faster. You have less uh, touch points with the customer, right. and it's faster, right? Reduce so, your yeah, cost of customer. service. Absolutely. Is so, there anything else you track for uh, field work? I think uh, that that's covers what, it. That goes. Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, while the technician is on site, and you know, different companies run it uh, uh, differently, but um, there's technician support. 
Yes. So how, what KPIs do you look at for technician support? So most important part of the technician support, right? Uh, first, even before you measure it, is to make the knowledge base available for the technician support. They should have access to the manuals, to mm. you know troubleshooting guides, to be able to uh, support the technician. Parts catalogs. Or the parts catalogs, right? And um, you know that's important. And therefore, average speed of answer, mm. because when the technician calls you, he's on site, right? You don't right. want him to be waiting there for someone to kind of, you know, uh, these days when they're calling the parts uh, company, or it the takes them hours, or the, or the manufacturer yeah. takes them hours to get support. So the average speed of answer is important. And you don't want your technician to be talking, talking to the manufacturer. Yeah. You want someone else to be doing that. Yeah. So, you know, you want to kind of, you know, make sure your average speed of answer is in place. Also your average handle time. So how mm. quickly the technician support can access information and provide those and details and, you know, and resolve the tickets, right? So also understanding the technician and what are his needs and, you know, what parts he's looking mm. for, what support, what equipment. So the knowledge of the technician support is also very important. So, you know, you can't just pick uh, a customer service guy and put there. So they got to be uh, techni have technical uh, yeah, tech enabled. Yeah, absolutely. So those are the key factors for even technician support. Do you also and look at like resolution uh, time or first time resolution? Yes, first time resolution because they got to fix, they got to support the technician on the call, right? So there's first right. time resolution. Uh, for so, the so, so it's like it's like customer support, but instead of for the customer, it's, it's for, for the, the technician, technician. and Correct. more or less some of the same KPIs uh, okay. uh, apply here. Great. So so we we talked about technician support. Then we've got like parts procurement. Um, yep. So how do you what, what what's important to measure when when it comes to pro procuring parts? So a few uh, KPIs that you want to look at while procuring parts is there are parts available at so many different vendors these mm. days, right? And you want to make sure you're getting the right part cheapest and those that deliver the fastest. True. So it's important that you identify the right vendor for the right part. Mm. And uh, that's one of the key KPI for our parts procurement team. Also following up like, on the what order. What is it like error rate or uh, uh, rejection rate? It's the cost efficiency rate. Cost. Okay. So looking at where you're getting the cheapest and who can deliver it fastest. Okay. So, 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 uh, 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 time to procure. Time to procure, uh, and also cost. So cost to procure. Cost to procure. At, so at, at the part level. At the part level. And what Correct. are you looking at? Like how the cost of us procuring certain parts going up and down? Correct. Of a specific equipment types, right? What mm. are the uh, trend of the cost? Trend. For parts, okay. Right? Interesting. And then uh, again, uh, you want to make sure that you have you're following up with the procurement. Uh, you know, with the vendor to see the part delivery. So the part order management is also important. Right. And then providing ETA to the technician and the dispatch team so that the next dispatch uh, on site is scheduled. So the customers keep calling uh, yeah. over and over and over. Correct. Uh, do you look at the uh, rejection rate? Um, I think that's part of the order management. So, you know, if uh, they're looking at the parts procurement and if there's a delay, or you know, uh, if it's sold out or the parts not available, they quickly kind of look at the next available option and make sure that not only the order, they're communicating it down the chain to dispatch, to the customer, through the portal. All right, so um, we talked about technical support. Um, now uh, let's break down parts procurement. So when it comes to ordering parts, what's important for us to measure? So the most important about um, parts procurement is making sure that you get the parts from the right vendor. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for the pricing, you're looking for the time of delivery, mm. the parts are delivered on time. You're checking the kind of availability of the uh, right parts as well. Mm. So, so those are the aspects you need to make sure that you are capturing. You also want to see the accuracy of the parts that you've ordered. And this could be both, right? It could be the vendor not sending you the right part or uh, you know the parts procurement team or the technician not identifying the right parts. So right. So so we send the some... part, but the part is has a defect, and we returned it. So the return rate that could be vendor related, or yeah. we <laughs> we ordered the wrong part. Or, yeah, the wrong part, and and, right. and you need to do an RCA on that, even when you talk about the wrong parts. So RCA. A root cause analysis okay. on <laughs> on where uh, you know uh, we kind of uh, missed it. So where is the gap in terms of identifying the right part, whether it was a technician that did not uh, give the right details in terms of the you know, model number, the series number, or it was the part procurement team that uh, placed mm. the wrong order. So you got to check that. And then if it's a knowledge gap or a miss, you just need to make right. sure that you so that, identify. And that probably has 
more impact on uh, first time fixed rate uh, than anything else. Uh, I remember uh, one of our partners saying, really, at the end of the day, first time fixed rate is about having the right part on the right truck at the right time in the right quantity. Correct. So, so what you talked and about is really measuring all of that. True, um, and it also gives the customer the confidence, right? So let's say you went with the wrong part to the site and this is already your second trip and then you Wow. realize oh this is the wrong path right. so customer massive you know, impact yeah, on service experience because you don't know what you're doing and you know mm. uh, it's just a waste of time and you know downtime for them as well again so yeah, yeah no absolutely that's all right uh so let's talk about the money right. uh, <laughs> you know money is pretty pretty up on our priority list uh when it comes to uh, operational excellence and the impact on customer experience so let's talk about billing what are you looking at when it comes to billing sending out the invoice so we've fix the equipment, we've procured the part, and the job is completed and we need to issue that invoice. The most important part is making sure you're sending out the invoices on time. Mm. You're not dealing, you know, the invoicing process. What I've observed is a lot of teams backlogs. are having backlogs of billing right. and they're not even catching. And some of them contractually need to send the invoice in a specific time period or there's a lapse in terms of uh, you know those bills not being paid or some penalty being applied wow. right right so Massive yeah so, so turnaround, turnaround time. time is yeah turnaround time is the yeah. most important aspect to it and also the accuracy of the bill which needs mm. to be uh, checked because you need to capture all the details that goes into the invoice including the parts that is procured the hours if there's Labor overtime hours. Yeah or after hours, things like that. So you need to kind of make sure all uh, details are in. And then you're sending it to the right credit person. Terms. Yeah, the credit terms, right? right? If it's uh, exceeding the not to exceed limit, you need to follow the escalation process or the approval process to get the approval before the you know invoice is sent out. Right. And uh, you know the important, uh, the other important aspect is you're sending it to the right person. Right. Right. You need to have the right contact. Make sure it's updated. Right. Because uh, there are people at the AR team of your clients that have moved or changed, and there are new AP, people. So AP. AP from AP, your client. Yeah. Right. So you're checking on that. Making sure you have the right contact. Right. right. Email there's ID. There's churn or change all, yeah. all the time, especially if you're so, dealing with a corporate account. Absolutely. And you want to make sure it goes on. You know, go to the right person, and then you're updating your system. So there's, uh, you know, the updated contact for even the collection team downstream to follow up if right. there's a requirement to follow and up. And that's so. so critical, especially for first-time customers. Um, it's not just about making sure you pick up the phone in time and you dispatch the technician and you fix the equipment the first time. But if we mess up the invoice, that that will have a massive uh, uh, impact yeah. on the customers uh, uh, confidence mm -hmm. and a lot of the reviews and we you know we've analyzed over 9,000 reviews uh, across uh, a few hundred companies and one of the uh, drivers of negative sentiment it has to do with billing right. uh, whether sending the uh, invoice with the wrong amount or uh, you know delays in sending the invoice and it just it's a such a, a, a driver of negative sentiment so it's really key uh, for us to have the right uh, sending the invoice on time and accurately. Yeah, and it's also about you know the trust uh, factor, right? So now, if they are, you're sending the wrong invoice and not the right amount, uh, they also start doubting all your invoice. Yeah, that I delays see. your right. you know uh, payment also because now they want to invoice uh, audit all your invoices. Right, and it's, and it's you, a, you become like you know they make it a point to pay you last yeah. because you always have errors, so so they'll really put you at the bottom of the of the pile correct and and that brings up the next point right because um, the next thing about billing is also the dispute management the dispute mm. resolution because once you have a dispute you want to make sure that you know you clarify and resolve that fast so mm. dispute resolution tat is also important right? mm. turn, around you, turn around time for, time for resolving, resolving disputes, disputes okay. right? because you don't want your customer to be hanging there with an escalation that they sent you about an invoice and you haven't able to resolve it like you know uh, in a day or two so and that's a massive impact on cash flow too if absolutely. it takes you like forever to work through these disputes it's just you're not going to collect your money anytime soon sure and you know the ap team also have a cycle so they've touched one invoice once right now it'll go through their cycle again back in the queue for them to look at it again right. once you resend it so it also you know they have their own turnaround time right to pay and if they've touched it once it delays your entire you know payment process so and then, so we go from billing, which is obviously very critical, but then the 
uh, last part, least last but not least, is AR or collection. So a lot of these, again, these bills, you know, go out and you know if you have net 30 or net 45 or net 60 or next and net 90, um, and these invoices are not getting paid on time. So how are you managing collections and AR? What, what KPIs are you uh, looking at? So like you rightly said, right, uh, the most important part of the business is getting the money in, right? And um, one of the most important aspect of collections is measuring DSO, daily sales outstanding, mm. right? And uh, what does that mean? It means what's the total outstanding based on your sales and your collection. So let's say if you're- That's uh, measured in days? It, it's measured in days. So how right. long is the invoice overdue? Right. as against its uh, payment due date. Uh, and it's measured, uh, some of the factor that uh, impacts it are 30, 60, 90 days collection. Okay. And also, of course, there are uh, credit limits. So once it's past due, that's when you start measuring like 30 days aging, 60 days, 90 right. days. Right, so you, right? You, you, you put them in buckets, buckets and you measure how much you have uh, in each bucket yeah. and how fast you're collecting and what's the percentage of collection in each of, each those, of buckets. those buckets. Yeah, and then you know you need to have an escalation process as it kind of you know rolls from one bucket to the other. Um, obviously, you want to you know as it keeps aging, you want a percentage to go smaller so that you right. know you don't have very high bad debts, and that's another KPI to measure how many of your you know invoices go are, uncollected, go uncollected or converts into bad debts or, or write-offs, and that's where a lot of folks uh, tend to send. Uh, their invoices to a third party collection agency or to a lawyer to, you know, to escalate uh, this. So I hope we didn't put you asleep, Mario. That, that was a lot, that was a heavy uh, and technical uh, conversation. So I hope we didn't put you asleep, but um, like we said, uh, you can't improve what you don't measure. And after instrumenting these KPIs, like where do we go from here? Okay, so I have these KPIs, what do I do with it? And that's the topic of our upcoming episodes where we're going to dive into each part of the order to cash cycle and workflow customer service dispatch and everything and then pinpoint uh, or uh, focus highlight uh, the breakdowns that happens in that workflow uh, what's the impact of it what are typically the root causes of these uh, uh, issues and what are some of the uh, maybe best practices so um, I hope you're excited as I am and as always it's, I know, you know, it's really boring for just me and Mario to be rattling all these KPIs. Um, but hey, we wanted to share with you what, you know, how we look at things. And I want to invite you to uh, maybe in the comments or reach out to me like, hey, what KPIs are you measuring and you're tracking? Uh, are you tracking all, some or none of these KPIs that we miss? Any of the uh, KPIs that are important to your business? Let me know uh, because our goal is to put together the ultimate guide to measuring service experience uh, and we'll be putting together like a cheat sheet uh, a document where you can download share it with your team share it with your operations team uh, so they can start putting uh, these uh, kpis in place and if you need some help in instrumenting these kpis feel free to reach out and uh, we would be happy to help uh, so thanks again uh, for tuning in for this episode again i hope we didn't put you to sleep and until next time uh, make uh, your days great thank you mario thank you yes and thank you for having me